Hey folks, so in this video I'll be talking about uh, visualization, which in chess is um, one of the most important skills. It's your ability to physically visualize the moves on the board uh, being played in the future and being able to see that future position uh, really, really accurately. Uh, in a nutshell, I believe visualization works a lot like a muscle. If you train it, if you work hard on it, it does improve and I feel like it improves in a, in a very straightforward way. But if you neglect your visualization, if you're kind of lazy during your training and you don't work on it, you don't push it, then it basically stays at the same level, maybe even atrophies a bit if you're not working on it. So I do think it's really important to work on visualization. Uh, I feel like it does improve naturally if you're playing chess and solving puzzles and analyzing. Uh, over time, your visualization skills will auto automatically improve just through practice and experience. Uh, but I also think there are a couple of things you can do to strengthen your visualization and uh, make sure that it improves uh, along the way. Especially if you feel like this is one of your weak points and you really need to work on it, uh, then I'm going to offer you some tips and, and tricks uh, to use during your regular training that I think will, will really improve your, your overall ability to, uh, to see the board. Simply put, I think the limit of your calculation really depends on your visualization. If you're not able to visualize the board uh, more than two or three moves ahead, that's really going to be a serious limit on how much you're able to calculate. Uh, but at the same time, of course, I should remind you guys that visualization isn't everything. You still need to be able to actually find good moves in your analysis. Uh, we can refer to these as candidate moves. Uh, a lot of times finding good moves is a matter of being able to spot all of the forcing moves in the position and being able to to figure out which ideas are, are really critical uh, in the position at hand. Um, but of course, without visualization, you're not going to be able to see very far. Uh, and that's why I really recommend uh, training these things hand in hand uh, and mainly working on your visualization while you're doing your calculation training. So let's take a look at the position we have on the board. I think this is um, a great example and a good exercise uh, to uh, discuss some of the visualization tips that I'd like to recommend. Um, this position actually comes from a game uh, played in the currently ongoing US Open. This is one of the games I selected for uh, the game of the day. I've been annotating one game per day for the US Chess website. And um, actually, if you want to see my full annotations to this game, I'll, I'll link uh, the article in the description below and you can check it out. Uh, it was actually a really well played uh, attacking game uh, by the player playing Black here, uh, National Master uh, Dex Webster. Um, and uh, this is actually just the critical moment of the game. Uh, at this point, uh, Black finds uh, a winning combination, and uh, I believe he had to calculate very accurately to, to figure this one out, and I think it's actually a really great exercise uh, for training uh, visualization, in addition to just basic calculation, looking for candidate moves and, and that kind of thing. Okay, so if you're an advanced player, I would suggest to solve the position without any hints, although you already know that it's black to play and, and find a winning combination, so that's definitely a big help. Um, for those of you that are less experienced, uh, I'm going to give you some hints, and I'm even going to give you the moves along the way so that you can at least just work on your visualization uh, without having to actually solve the problem, because I do think this is uh, quite difficult, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. But if you're in the range of, let's say, 1400 and up, I would really suggest to first try and, 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 and try to solve the position on your own without any help. All right, so if you want more time, obviously uh, pause the video. But the first move in the combination is uh, arguably the most forcing move in the position. Uh, bishop takes f2 check. So if you intuitively felt like this is the move, then uh, I think you're, you're already on the right track. You have a good intuition for spotting the forcing moves and the most important moves to look at in the position. Uh, but of course, it's not enough to just see, see that this move is possible. You really have to calculate it out. And that's what uh, I think we should uh, practice right now. Uh, so white has an option here. White can either take the bishop or move the king away. Now I think we can see pretty easily that if white plays a move like king to h2, just letting black grab the pawn, uh, it's pretty clear black is going to have a lot of options there. It can pull the bishop back. We don't even have to because the bishop is defended. Uh, it's clear black will have a choice of gray moves there, and there's not really a whole lot to calculate. Um, the key line is what happens if white takes the piece. So this is kind of a side point, but in our calculation, I think it always makes sense to start with the critical lines first. So let's focus our calculation on bishop takes f2, rook takes f2. 
Uh, and what I would suggest for you guys watching the video is try to follow along uh, the visualization as much as you can. Of course, at a certain point, it, it might go beyond your limits. At that point, I would suggest to just try to pause the video and recalculate the line and, and try to keep the position as accurately in your head uh, as possible. Um, just to clarify a bit, when you're seeing a position in the future uh, or you're calculating a position that, that might happen, uh, it's not like you're going to see the position as clearly as if it was just set up in the board in front of you. It's always going to be at least a little bit fuzzy, a little bit hazy. But what you're trying to do when you're visualizing a position, you're trying to see it as clearly as you possibly can, meaning as close to it's physically in front of you uh, as, as you can do it. Um, so when we're calculating bishop takes f2 check, uh, I, and as you're doing calculation, you know, if you're new to this and you're, and you're working on it, I, I strongly suggest just slow down, take it one move at a time. If you calculate three moves ahead and you lose the position, go back to the start and redo it. The more you do this kind of work where you go back to the start and kind of recalculate the line, I think the more this really stretches your visualization and it's what gives you that improvement uh, in the long run. So I, I think that's a really important point. Um, okay, so here when we're calculating bishop takes f2, Make sure that the c5 square uh, in your mind is empty. That means the bishop is on f2. The c5 square is empty. It means this queen is attacking all of the squares on this diagonal all the way up to the bishop being on f2. Um, so let's calculate bishop takes f2, rook takes f2, and now it's black to play. So how should we continue the combination from here? Okay, if you want to think on your own, uh, just make sure to pause the video when, whenever you'd like, but I'm just going to keep going through the solution and try to visualize it uh, as best you can. So bishop takes f2, rook takes f2, and then again the most forcing move in that position, okay there's queen takes rook, but I don't think that's very good. The next best move would be rook to d1 check, so this is definitely a very natural way to follow up. Again, white has uh, some options here, but some are less critical than others. So for example, after rook to d1 check, white could technically block with the knight and play knight to e1, but then black will play rook takes e1 check, and again, white is in danger of, uh, well, just has to deal with the check and has already lost the knight. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense from white's point of view. Uh, again, after bishop takes f2, rook takes f2, rook to d1 check, if white goes king h2, well then, black can take the rook on f2 with the queen. Queen takes f2, black has won the exchange. Uh, in our calculation, if we're finishing a line, let's say, okay, we won the exchange, we're happy, the line is over, we don't have to calculate any further. The one thing I would suggest doing is to just make a final check for any forcing moves from the opponent. Now, if you're not able to see the position clearly, then this is going to be very difficult. And at that point, I think it's best to, again, restart the line, go back to the very first move, and try to calculate things ahead, and try to see the position clear. Uh, in general, I think players often try to calculate well past the point where <laughs> their visualization has already dropped. They're not really seeing the position clearly. They're putting pieces on the wrong squares. They haven't taken off pieces that have been captured. Um, if you can't see the position clearly, it's kind of senseless to try to calculate further because you're not even looking at the right position. So as soon as you notice the position has gotten fuzzy and, and you haven't uh, kept track of it, go back to the start, do it again, and this is what will help you visualize clearer and further uh, in the future. Uh, okay, so let's start from the beginning. And again, we're going to go through the whole problem actually on the board. So if you're <laughs> frustrated because you don't know what lines I'm talking about, uh, we will actually analyze this move by move and, and see everything on the board. So you'll be able to, to see what, what happens. Uh, okay, but for now, let's keep trying to hold it in our head. So bishop takes f2 check, rook takes f2, rook to d1 check. And if king h2, we have queen takes f2, winning the exchange. And if we do a quick check in our visualization there, there doesn't seem to be any really forcing moves that the white has. The queen on a4 is not really attacking anything. Uh, white doesn't have any great captures. Uh, and black's pieces are, are very, very active and very strong. Okay, so let's go back to white's final option. So there's bishop takes f2 check, rook takes f2, rook to d1 check. And that leaves us with bishop to f1. So blocking the check and keeping the king on g1, defending that rook on f2. So material-wise, black is going to be a piece down in that position. Uh, the bishop on c5 is gone, the pawn on f2 is gone, uh, and those are all the changes. Um, one way to check the clarity of your visualization, and I strongly recommend you do this 
whenever you feel like the visualization has gone in fuzzy and you're not sure if you uh, actually see the position correctly or not, well, try to keep that position in your head and then try to identify every single legal capture in the position for both sides. This is a really great exercise because if you're visualizing a position correctly, whether it's two moves deep or even eight moves deep, if you're truly visualizing it accurately, well, you'll be able to see the position where the pieces are. And when you're looking at a position, you should be able to identify all of the immediate captures. I mean, if you're able to see the position clearly, then that should be a pretty simple task. So it's a great way to test yourself to see if you're actually visualizing something or if you're kind of fooling yourself in, into thinking you are, where, whereas in reality, you might be hallucinating, you miscalculated something, and you don't actually have the right position. Um, so I, I really suggest doing this um, whenever you're specifically working on your visualization. So you've calculated some line three moves deep, and then you check the clarity by then uh, trying to identify all of the captures. So let's do that now, and then we'll actually put the position on the board. So once again, here's the line we want to calculate. Bishop takes f2, rook takes f2, rook to d1 check, and then bishop to f1. And if you feel like you visualize that position correctly, then you should be able to see, again, all of the captures for both sides. So try to take a minute, pause the video, and try to figure it out. Um, okay, once you feel like you've done it, then you actually go to that position and see if you were correct. Uh, I'll do it now while we're, uh, before we've actually reached that position. So once we've calculated bishop takes f2, rook takes f2, rook d1 check, bishop f1, let's start with black. The rook on d1 can take the bishop on c1, can also take the bishop on f1 with check. This bishop on e6 uh, can take on h3. And the queen on b6 can take on f2, the rook here with check. The queen can also take this pawn on b3. And I just noticed that the bishop can also take that pawn on b3. That is a legal capture as well. So the point is not to judge whether these captures are, are good or not. You'll do that when if you try to keep calculating. But if you're seeing the position clearly, then you should be able to notice all of those captures. Okay, let's do white real quick. I don't think white has a lot of captures, but in that final position, this queen on a4 is still able to take this knight on c6 and is going to be able to capture this pawn on a5. Uh, this bishop on c1 is still hitting uh, the pawn on h6, and I think that is all the captures that, that white has in that final position, uh, if, I'm not, uh, if I'm not missing any. Okay, then once you kind of feel like you've gotten a, a clear picture, we can actually put it on the board. And this is, of course, a very important part, actually checking your visualization and making sure that you visualize things correctly. So bishop takes f2 check, rook takes f2, rook to d1 check, and uh, bishop to f1. And here you would do a quick glance, make sure that this is the position you are visualizing. Uh, the captures that we pointed out seem to be uh, all correct. Bishop h3, bishop takes b3, white can take on c6, can take on a5, and, and take this pawn on h6. Uh, and and so on. Uh, okay, so the combination actually didn't end here. So if you haven't solved for the full solution, because at this moment black is still down a piece and, and it's not clear that, that black is winning. So if you'd like to solve the, the full combination, I would suggest to, again, pause the video when the position is here and try to see the whole line uh, for yourself. Um, I'm going to put the position in that critical moment. But again, if you want to try to solve for the full solution from the very beginning, then pause the video at that point and, and by all means go for it. But I'd like to give another chance for, for people to pause their video at this point um, and try to find the best continuation for black from here. Because this is also not exactly an easy exercise. Uh, if you're able to see the right line from the first move, then I think that's that's really great. And I believe this is what the uh, the master playing black was able to calculate from afar. Uh, but for the rest of you guys who just want some more visualization practice, uh, we'll go from here. Okay, so black to play, how to continue? Well, I think there are a couple moves that should uh, definitely uh, pique our interest. Bishop takes h3 looks like a very strong cannon move because it's capturing a pawn near the king and putting pressure uh, against the bishop on f1. So if you saw this position in your mind and you thought that this would be a decent move, uh, I think you're definitely right. I think black definitely gets a very, very strong attack here. Uh, we're immediately threatening rook takes f1 check because the rook on f2 uh, is pinned. 
and um, it's actually very difficult for, for white to defend here. I think the only move is this uh, very nice defensive move, bishop e3. So getting the bishop out with tempo, of course, we can take the bishop, but the bigger point is opening up white's rook along the defensive rank. Uh, and here I think black can take on f1 with check, otherwise we'll lose the rook. Rook takes f1, and after rook takes e3, black is getting uh, a good position. Uh, so I don't think this line was super easy to evaluate, but it's enough to see here that black is doing really well. We're attacking the rook on f1, hitting the knight on f3, and yeah, basically white is going to be losing some material shortly. Uh, however, this is not the best that black can do in the position. So if you'd like to try again, I would say bishop takes h3 is good, but it's not the best. Try to find the real knockout here. Black has, a, let's say, a win that, that really just ends the game uh, very, very cleanly. Um, okay, so let's try to calculate this one out. The other very, very forcing move that I haven't mentioned yet is rook takes f1 check. So if you consider this move, if you realize this was strong, good. I think this is an absolutely key move in, in the entire combination. So what's going on here? Let's try to visualize this one out again. After rook takes f1 check, white pretty much has to take with the king. Then black can play bishop takes h3 check. And after white plays king to g1, let's say, Black is a key move in that position to win the game. If you haven't found that move yet, I think this would be a great visualization exercise for you right now. Try to visualize those moves that we just played out and then try to find the best move for black in that position. So once again, it's rook takes f1 check, king takes f1, bishop takes h3 check, king to g1. In that position, black is down a whole rook. So if black doesn't find the right move, black might just be losing because of the, the material deficit. So try to visualize those moves, pause the video, take as much time as you need, recalculate, revisualize if you need to, and try to find the strongest move for black in that position. Of course, this is the hardest part of calculation when you have to combine your visualization with your uh, candidate move searching, your ability to find good moves. Uh, if you're able to visualize and you're able to find the right moves, this is kind of like the recipe that makes uh, for a good calculator. Okay, so let's put it on the board. Uh, Rook takes f1, king takes f1, Bishop takes h3 check, king to g1, and here the only winning move in the position for black was a nice attacking move, rook to e2. Uh, putting pressure against the pinned rook on f2, it turns out white has no good way of uh, defending this rook, and because of this, black is winning. Once black plays queen takes f2 check here, white is essentially just going to, to get mated. So this move, rook e2, was really actually the key move uh, in the entire combination, which is what I really like about this exercise. Uh, and by the way, white can try bishop e3 again, but here it, it just doesn't cut it. Queen takes e3, and then if rook f1, black can first just take this one, uh, and then queen takes f2 next is, is game over. Uh, so this rook e2 move was really necessary. Without this move, if this move rook e2 did not exist in the position, well then black would actually be losing here, because white is up a rook and black wouldn't have any anything to show for it. Uh, rook e1 check is not a thing, there are no good knight moves, no good queen moves, basically white is just just winning. So it was very important to see this move rook e2 from, from the very beginning, uh, and I believe the player who played black here likely uh, had seen this in advance. Otherwise he'd be taking a huge risk, because he'd be going for a position where he's like down a rook for for no compensation except for that one key tactical uh, resource. Uh, so if you if you saw the move from this position, I think that's really good already. If you saw rook f1, bishop h3, rook e2, I think that's already a very decent calculation. If you saw it from the very beginning, meaning from this moment, before you even sacrifice the piece, I think this is kind of the, the ideal that, that we're striving for. Uh, but again, the player playing black here was rated over 2200 already a very decent player, so clearly uh, playing at a, at a high level. Um, so that was basically the, the full solution. Bishop takes f2, rook d1, and then after bishop f1, it was very important to see that you have this rook takes f1, uh, king takes f1, bishop takes h3, and then rook e2. Uh, in the game, white played the move rook g2, which is another actually very important line, because here after bishop takes g2 check, king takes g2, uh, white is left with an extra piece, and it's not clear that, that black has enough for it, but indeed black does. After the moves, uh, rook e2 check, king anywhere in the game, white played king h3 and queen to f2. Uh, black actually has a very powerful attack and uh, basically uh, just a completely uh, mating attack, and, and the game is uh, pretty much decided. 
Uh, the threat is to first play queen g2, or of course the knight is also being threatened, but eventually to target the king using the pawns with like g6 and, and f5. So just to show how the game ended after queen f4, uh, black played check, king g4, and g6, which was a nice move. There were other ways to win the game here as well. I think h5 was also good, uh, but g6 is good enough, threatening f5, and basically white's king here uh, was just uh, caught in a mating net. Again, if you'd like to check out the whole game, you can uh, click the link in the description uh, and, and see my full annotations uh, to the game for, for US Chess. Um, but now let's go back, um, because uh, I want to recommend one final thing when you're working on your visualization. Uh, when I was improving or trying to improve as a player and working on my calculation, um, one of the, the key exercises that I would always do that I think is, is really, really helpful and, and I'd like to recommend is to try to visualize the entire solution after you've gone over the problem from the very beginning. So what I would do is after I've tried to solve a problem, so just like we did here, uh, hopefully you guys, you know, got this position, tried to figure it out, did your best. And now that we've gone over the solution, the best thing to do now that you know the moves is to try to visualize it from the very beginning from right here and try to just see what it feels like to visualize the entire combination right from the very beginning. So even if you didn't get very far, if you only found the first move or two in the combination, well, now you know the full solution. And so you're not actually calculating. You're strictly just trying to visualize the moves. Uh, so obviously it's a lot easier than having to find the moves yourselves. And uh, I think this is um, a really important uh, and really great way to really push your visualization because you'll get this feeling of what it would be like to calculate this during an actual game. So I really encourage you guys, uh, if you were, uh, if you didn't, you know, already solve the problem on your own and, and you needed some help along the way to pause the video uh, at this moment here and just try to visualize the whole solution move by move, taking it really slow. Bishop takes F2, Rook takes F2, Rook D1 check. Bishop f1, rook takes f1 check, king takes f1, bishop takes h3 check, king to g1, and then this final move, rook to e2. And then again, to really test the clarity of your visualization, once you visualize the entire solution, five moves deep, do the uh, captures exercise and try to identify every single potential capture uh, in that position for, for both sides. Uh, and then, okay, we can put it on the board and uh, you guys have had uh, many chances at this point to pause your video. Let's just go to that final position. Rook takes f1. And here, if you were um, testing your uh, clarity and identifying all of the captures, then at this point, you should have seen that black in play. Queen takes f2, rook takes f2, rook takes c2, queen takes b3. Uh, and white can play uh, these three captures again, queen takes knight, queen takes pawn, uh, bishop takes pawn, and okay, white technically has rook takes e2, although this is an illegal move, whether you notice that one or not uh, doesn't really matter. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's fine. Um, okay, so to sum it up, when you're working on your visualization, I think the best thing to do is to work it alongside your calculation. Um, so first, try to solve the problem without any hints, do your best. Then, once you've gone over the solution, go back to the very start and try to visualize all of the moves from the very beginning, uh, line by line, variation by variation, taking it one move at a time, making sure you're visualizing the right position every single step of the way until you get to that final position of the combination. Uh, if it's too hard for you, there are definitely times when, you know, the problem was, the solution was like nine moves deep and I just couldn't visualize the whole thing. Then just do your best start from the beginning, do your best again, you know, repeat two to three times, and just try to stretch your visualization as far as you can. Once you've, once you've kind of hit the limits of, of your visualization, you know, usually you start getting tired, your brain might even start hurting a little bit. I think that's definitely a good time to stop your training, take a break, and, and come back to it later. But if you do get to that feeling of where you just feel like physically exhausted because you've just been calculating and focusing so much and uh, you really feel like you've pushed your visualization, I think this is exactly how you want to feel at the end of a, a really serious training session. You, you should feel pretty tired, uh, especially if you're doing hardcore calculation for 45, 60, up to 90 minutes. You should definitely feel exhausted at the end of that. And that's how you know you're really going to be making um, a lot of progress. Lastly, for advanced players, I would say in the rating range of 1800 or maybe even a little bit higher, 
Uh, one great way to really improve and train your visualization is to start playing blindfold chess. Uh, blindfold chess can be a little bit intimidating uh, for those that have never tried it because, you know, we already have a hard time trying to visualize the board two, three moves ahead. Uh, so how are we going to play with the entire position, uh, you know, uh, having to keep it in our heads? Um, but I think actually once you start and get the hang of it, it, it does really get easier uh, over time. Um, I started playing blindfold chess, I think, when I was around 1900, maybe 2000. At first, I felt like I could only do maybe five to ten moves. Um, but as I practiced more and more, I just tried to go further and further, and eventually I was able to keep, you know, an entire game in my head, uh, memori remembering all the moves and keeping the position uh, uh, pretty accurate. Uh, eventually I was able to do multiple games, two games, three games. I don't think I've ever tried more than, than five games. I, I was never really interested in, in trying to see how many I can do, because I'd already felt like it had helped my visualization so much that I just basically moved on to, to other things. Um, if you're just starting out, uh, to play uh, blindfold chess, there are a couple of um, tips I would give you. Number one, you can play either in person. I, I really like this approach uh, with with a uh, with a friend, uh, or if they're lower rated than you, you know they can set up the board and just have the board in front of them, and you could uh, you know have your back to the board and, and be playing blindfold. I used to do this with a lot of my lower rated friends that um, weren't exactly good players, but you know at least they can make moves on the board, and I would be forced to keep track of them, and that was always really good training. But nowadays you can actually also play online. I believe you can play on chess.com and Lee Chess, they both have uh, blindfold settings, uh, so you can play against other players who are also playing blindfolded and, and test your skills uh, that way. So, at the very beginning, blindfold chess is really hard. I mean, it's very difficult to, to keep the, the position. Um, just going to the starting position here. Obviously, this is going to be our starting position in a blindfold chess game. Um, one of the main things I like, I like to point out is you know, most chess players have seen this position quite a bit in their lives, and, and they know this position like the, the back of their hand. So when you're first making the couple moves, it's not like you really have to keep track of the entire position. You just have to keep track of the first couple of moves, because intuitively, you know where everything is by default. You know that the knights are on b8 and g8 and b1 and g1. You know where the bishops are. You know where the rooks are. You know where all the pawns are. So if... The, if you know what the first couple of moves are, if it's an opening you, you recognize, you should be able to already keep it in your head uh, pretty easily, at least the first five to ten moves. After that, it's definitely going to get tricky and the position is going to be super fuzzy. So your first game, you might make a couple of illegal moves, you might mess up, you might just completely lose the position. But once you're done, regardless of how far you got, play through the game see it on the actual board and and try to see how close your visualization was to to the actual to actually what happened uh, on the in the position uh were you visualizing things correctly were you calculating correctly did you miss any obviously good moves um, did you miss some captures? Did you make any illegal moves? Just go over what you thought you visualized. And I think this will give you a little bit of feedback of what you need to focus on. And then the next time you play, I think it will also be very tough. But as you play a, a one game, two game, five games, ten games, uh, slowly but surely your visualization will improve. You'll get better and better at um, seeing the position and things will become clear and you'll be able to see things further and, and even faster. I think over time, once again, the more you work on it, the more you push yourself and really stretch your visualization, um, if you if you're always trying striving to just to see one or two moves further, uh, you'll really improve a lot in a short span of time. Um, all right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about visualization or uh, anything that that I covered uh, in this video, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you guys in uh, the next video. Take care.